Hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of How Not To Write A Novel. Now I've actually started recording this video just after midnight so I'm technically late. Although I have been recording a video at midnight before so it's only a couple of minutes different. But I, th I think I've got a good reason to be a bit late this time because I was writing this um, chapter and I kept thinking oh, just one more paragraph I'll just do one more paragraph and then I can get on with making the video about it um, and it has come out quite well it's ended up um, bringing me to a total of 11,000 words on this story and given that at midnight it just finished being the 22nd that's an average of 500 words a day um that's not ideal i was aiming for more than a thousand but it's just over half of my target um, my actual total words in that um, story now is 11,001 um i didn't plan it like that that was just the number it came to when i added up the different documents of those words, um, 1,241 were done um, today, well, technically yesterday, um, which I think is my best day so far this month. It's not such a great number of words, but it's more than I have been managing, so I think that means that I might finally be getting into the story properly. Now, a lot of this story has been George dealing with this guy threatening him. And the other conflict that comes in at the same time is me trying to describe what everybody looks like without pausing the action for a big exposition dump. This guy's cornered George. Turns out he was right about someone following him. He's being pinned against the wall and this guy says, I've got a proposition for you. But before he can tell him what kind of proposition, I, uh, the silence was broken by another dry laugh from the confident man. And then when the silence was becoming almost unbearable and George would have agreed to anything just to get out of here by the sound of a door opening and closing. George saw a figure coming closer, what might be the top of a woman's head just visible over the man's shoulder. She looked pale, but that could have been the cold second-hand electric light. Tall and slim, with long dark hair tied back in a stern bun. George tried to signal her with his eyes, hoping that with enough frantic movements he could warn her to stay away before the world's most formal mugger realised she was standing behind him. I'm hoping that's getting a bit of the character across as well as what's actually happening. But... This woman um, doesn't move out of the way. This is Yuki who's just showed up. So I'm trying to shoehorn in an excuse to describe her appearance. But a mugger's not just going to stand there and ignore her. The tough guy spun around faster than George's eyes could follow, delivering a vicious slap to the space where the woman's face had been a second before. He didn't waste any time recovering from this and ducked low to the ground to follow up with a sucker punch. Stop that, the woman barked, like a society lady whose poodle had been found doing something unmentionable in her herbaceous borders. She didn't strike back, but placed one hand gently across the back of his wrist, as if that would protect her from another backhand. Lady, you don't know what you're dealing with, the man growled. This is no place for normals. I'll say it one more time. Take your pretty little nose out of my business. I'm a professional and I can take some pride in informing you that I've never let a witness live. So if you know what's good for you. The woman didn't seem intimidated at all. So, you know, I'm mostly trying to keep it down to just description of what they're actually doing. But I'm hoping that that will also give the reader a little more about the personality. I'm hoping it'll say more than 
going into any depth with a description of how they're moving. Does that make sense? I'm hoping you can follow what's going on without me needing to explain in too much detail, because if I go into too much detail, it will be too slow. It's a hard balance to strike, really. Because I need to show what these people are feeling, what kind of person they are, rather than just the violence, so that um, it's possible to sympathise with them. I've got to show what's actually going on well enough that the audience can visualise it, and I've got to do it in few enough words that the action doesn't pause for reading description. So it's a hard balance to strike. I'm not sure if I've got it right yet. Um, I would appreciate if anyone could take a look at this chapter and tell me which bits are dragging a bit. There should be a link down there in the description. But um, after they've got onto this brief conflict, she's not worried at all. She hesitates. She breathes slowly, eyes closed, like she's doing some kind of Tai Chi or something. Gives George an opportunity to look her up and down, describe her a little. And then she just snaps, stay there. She snapped at the mugger, eyes flicking open and darting to George. And you, run. She didn't need to tell him twice. And I thought a bit more about what's going to happen there. I've just had two kind of similar scenes with what looks like it's going to be a mugging turning into something else. So it seems appropriate if I explain those two scenes by tying them together. Yuki has incredibly good senses. She can probably hear other people's conversations a street or two over. So when she seems to be meditating, I think she might actually be listening for other people in this city who could help. She's finding anyone who, could she, who she could use to distract this drinker from following them. She doesn't want to fight him because she wants to be human. And she wants to know who George is, so she's kind of curious. She's just commanded George to run and he does so immediately. This is going to be something she does a few times without any mention being made of it. Um, is that if she gives someone a direct order, they will nearly always follow it without thinking why. Um, this might be a hint as to her actual race, or it might just be coincidence because she speaks confidently, authoritatively. But he runs, she quickly gets ahead, he follows her, and coming around the next corner, they run into Alex and Julian. And Yuki's just going to shout out, there's a drinker right behind us, and then keep on running. Those two were expecting to fight a drinker and the drinkers run away. They'll probably be still on a bit of an adrenaline rush. So somebody shouting, there's a drinker there. They, they might just take it on, on face value. And then only afterwards wonder um, and only afterwards wonder who this woman is who's giving them orders. Then when they're investigating Solomon's crimes and they run into her again doing detective stuff, that gives them a first reason to believe that she's another gifted like them, which is going to be where their relationship starts off between these two groups. They read Yuki as another gifted, maybe a member of another group like theirs that they don't know about. And so it'll be a shock for them, and hopefully a little shock for the reader, when they find out what she actually is. But um, I think I've done quite well on that piece. So um, I'm going to try and continue it tomorrow and hope that the writing continues going that well. If it does, I think that there's a decent chance, especially now I've finished the 
big piece of coding I was helping someone with, there's a decent chance that I can actually catch up with my target. I mean, in 20 days, I've written 11,000 words instead of 20,000. So that would mean that to get to 30,000, I need 20,000 in the last week. But I can do that. I can do more than 2,000 words a day. I've kept that up for more than a year in the past. So I do think I can actually catch up with my target for this writing especially if it flows easily like it did today. That's something, that's a habit I really need to reinforce, is when it's going well, keep on going. So, um, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow with more good news to report. If I've already actually done that, then there should be a link to the video up there. And... In any case, there will be a link up there to yesterday's video, which I actually released this morning. And there should be a link there to the playlist so you can watch whichever of those catches your interest. Bye.